like I, I just appreciate the platform that I have. Like I have this platform now as, as a mom, as a, an Asian American, as a, a person of color. And, you know, grow, like I said before, growing up, I, I just never saw myself in these books. And I have this platform now where, and that I can help kids, all kids feel like they're seen and be seen. And I know how empowering that is because I know the opposite of that growing up. And, you know, that's, that's how I choose to use my voice. I'm John Baird Ingalls, and this is Without These Books, a thank you inspired video podcast celebrating the authors, artists, books, and characters that changed us as writers, readers, and as people. This episode is made possible with support from the Orange County Community Foundation. In today's episode, we connect with New York Times bestselling children's illustrator Nina Mata. Nina has illustrated for a litany of children's authors and a few award winning athletes as well working with Olympic gymnast Lori Hernandez on the book She's Got This, and NBA superstar LeBron James on I Promise, nominated for the 52nd NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Literature. Nina, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> That's <laughs> wonderful. I love that honor. Uh, so let's start by talking about the book you chose to share with us today. Yeah, so it's Mafaro's Beautiful Daughters by John Steptoe. It was awarded the Caldecott and a Coretta Scott King Award in 1988. And it's, you know, it's a beautiful book about... Um, um, two daughters, um, and they go through this. They go through a journey to meet uh, the king. To and along this journey, they they go through different experiences based on their who they are. And one is kind, and one um, the other daughter, Manyara, is not so nice. And at the end of the day it's basically a book about kindness and what and um the rewards you get just by doing good deeds and just who you are <laughs> can you remember when this book was introduced to you yeah i you know my mom was a teacher for 40 years so when we first got here when i was six um she gave me, she would give me so many books. Like every time she'd come home from work, it would just be one book after another. And I grew up um, mesmerized by these Caldecott seals. And I would just like always graze through it. And I always knew that if it if the book had a Caldecott seal, I was in for a good story. So mom came home one day and she gave, she gave me this book, we read it, and it, I was just transported into a different world. And it was just a magical book. And it reminded me of my grandmother back home. She would tell us these folk tales. And it just reminded me um, similar to what she would um, tell us when I was growing up. Have you had the experience, obviously you have the book now, have you had the experience of sharing this story with your your child I haven't yet I want to pick the right time to to do so because right now she's she's just starting to learn how to read and really um get engaged in in a in a book so I want to pick the perfect time I don't know if there's a perfect time (laughs) maybe I should do it soon (laughs) yeah I don't think there I mean I think you know at any moment uh, yeah some of your books I've read to my, well, he was one at the time and he loved them. So there's never a moment of like, this is the time. And this book is so vivid. um, And the imagery is like, there's so much detail. Uh, I, I, I think it would be, you know, it's, it's challenging not to get soaked into this world and, and, um, you know, the beauty of, of uh, Mr. Steptoe's art. Yeah. Uh, how, how did this book inspire you as an artist? Um, it just, I, it was one of the only books that I remember like 
growing up and just being mesmerized by the artwork. And it, I think it was one of the first times where I looked at the work so much that I tried to figure out the strokes and the line work and to see if there were any strokes and wondered, wow, how did he do this? <laughs> and and we would just, it would take me hours to get through the whole book just because I love the art so much. It just, it was so, the emotions and the colors, everything about it was just so vivid and it's still, still such a mesmerizing book. <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you shared it because uh, I I just fell in love with it because of your mm -hmm. recommendation, and I'm definitely yeah. going to share this with with my children. Uh, <laughs> I would love to talk about your work. Uh, you know, in in line with this story and how important uh, John Steptoe's story is in his artwork, it's the the representation and diversity that that we are starting to see a lot more of. But in the 80s, we didn't really get a lot of that. Um, but with yeah, your work, I, there, go ahead, please. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, John Steptoe is such a masterful like storyteller. And he was one of, yeah, you're right. He was one of the only author illustrators out there that was highlighting um, these stories and the African-American experience and, you know, like, Personally speaking, the work is important, was important to me growing up because, you know, his books were, were the only ones that were out there speaking to people of color. You know, growing up, we didn't, in the 80s, like you said, we didn't, I, I would look for books in the library and they rarely had representations of myself and of my friends. And yeah, when I saw this book, I just, I gravitated towards it just because also it was about folk tales and so much fun to like be in a different world. Well, you yeah. definitely utilize that uh, diversity. Like you, it is at the forefront of, of every, every of the, every one of the books that you've worked on. Oh, thank um, you. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's incredible. It's wonderful. It's necessary. Um, but I, I, I'm, I want you to talk a little bit about what that experience is like to be able to create these characters and to 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 develop these stories with these voices and these these faces. Yeah, so I, you know, like I like I tell everybody, I I basically just draw my childhood. I, I immigrated here from the Philippines when I was six years old and I settled in Queens, New York, which is like the melting pot of pretty much culture, I think. And I was exposed to all types of communities and you know, I carry all these stories and memories with me every day. So um, I guess it kind of goes full circle where I, if I get a manuscript and I just see, I see my friends in it or I, I can, visualize the the play of like my friends when we were younger I, I usually pick it up and those are the books that I I end up working with now I have to talk about uh collaboration because you collaborated with some incredible people uh <laughs> you've incredible authors but uh you got to work with uh Olymp Olympic gymnast Lori Hernandez on her book she's got this you got to work with LeBron James which <laughs> That's that's a whole other conversation, uh, but you also got to work with Rafi, which blows me away. You know, if anyone out there is a fan of, of yeah. children's entertainment, you know yep. Rafi. Uh, we yeah, all start so, seeing Baby Beluga together. It's so funny because um, when I told my mom and my parent, my my parents that I I was doing a book with LeBron James, you know, they were they were excited. And then my since my mom was a teacher, I told her. You know, like the same way. I'm like, I'm doing a book with Rafi. She was just floored. She was like, oh my God, you've made it. Because <laughs> she just grew up, you know, learning all the songs. She she knows him like as if he were part of the family. And he she was just starstruck. <laughs> what is that experience like to be able to to take these um, these people and and not all of them are necessarily storytelling, although I, I believe everybody's a storyteller. Yeah. Um, but to be able to take their vision and their stories 
and to really bring it to life on the page. What is that experience like? I, I think, you know, picture books in general, um, I think it's just the words and the illustration. If you do it properly, it it's like watching a dance, you know, like it's the ever flow of the art and work. And, you know, that's when, that's why when I get a manuscript, I would, really need to like feel a connection with the message or the story before taking on the project and as a visual storyteller my goal is always to create art that continues telling the story that the the words aren't you know and or maybe add a little bit um a little bit of the story that isn't isn't necessarily said and i think that's the fun part about my job and I always hope that the art acts as a thread to the words that help sew it all together. We, we don't really enter into our industry looking for, you know, accolades or looking for, mm -hmm. for that recognition. I mean, we do, yeah. but <laughs> when you get something like a, a, you get number one on the New York Times bestselling list, or you get nominated for, for one of these awards, how does that affect you? And, and how does that, that change your approach to your work, if at all? Um, I mean, the accolades are, are really, really nice. <laughs> I mean, um, to be recognized for the work that you do and, um, and just, just to be recognized for the fact that you're having fun. It just shows like, and, and I'm just grateful for it. Does it change me? I don't know necessarily. I think it, I think I, I do try to, to just, I appreciate it, but I, I am still myself. If, if I'm not having fun, then then it's probably going to show. So I always <laughs> try to remind myself, yeah, just as long as you're still having a good time with the work, it'll show and the accolades will just happen to come. <laughs> I'm sure it off offers more opportunities. And yeah, it does. It, 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 I'm grateful that, um, you know, like one of you know the biggest books I've ever worked on was I Promise. And it really opened the door for like more opportunities to do what I love. And I guess, yeah, that's definitely one of the pluses about it. Uh, so as a, as a, a mother, how mm -hmm. does that change or affect the way that you approach your work and, and you approach your way of visual storytelling? You know, um, when I think of, like, I, I just appreciate the platform that I have. Like, I have this platform now as, as a mom, as a, an Asian American, as a, a person of color. And, you know, gr like I said before, growing up, and I just never saw myself in these books. And I have this platform now where, and that I can help kids, all kids feel like they're seen and be seen. And I know how empowering that is because I know the opposite of that growing up. And you know, that's, that's how I choose to use my voice. A very important question. Yeah. Are you still in contact with LeBron? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. <laughs> my agent did try to, try to score me some box seats, but I never heard back from her. <laughs> Nina, thank you so much for taking the time to, to chat with me. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, I love your sure. work. I love sharing thank it with you. my kids. It's a pleasure to meet you. We should do it again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Join the conversation at withoutbooks.org.